before we start this video, a large thank you to Fallen, Keely, Guest, Tiago, Executive, and Ian for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a massive thank you to Halo Burner, Dark Matter, and Porgello for their immense support to the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, gentlemen, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to make it so we can actually name our character. Forgot to do that. And also, upon request, we're going to make it so we can change the uh, sex for a character from male to female by just hitting a button. So, over on our name button, there's nothing here that happens when we click. So, let's just do what we do before. Let's create an open and close, uh, choose character name, menu and submenu. Now, we are only going to need the player. And obviously, we're going to want to toggle the buttons on or off. And we want to enable or disable our submenu. So in this case, our sub menu is literally just going to be another button. So let's just write out what we want to do real fast. So I'm going to change the name of this so we're not getting an error. Open, choose, name sub menu, and then close, choose, name sub menu. All right, so what exactly are we doing here? Well, we're going to use a thing called an input field. So we're going to disable the name game button object, replace it with the name input field game object, and then we're going to select that input object to actually name the character. And then when we close it, we're just going to do the reverse. We're going to enable the name button game object again and disable the text field where you choose your name uh, and then select the name button because that's the last button you selected. So we're going to make some variables here uh, to do this. First off, we're going to need a game object for the character name uh, menu, sub menu. So this would be just where basically we're housing that text field. going to keep it called a sub menu just to stay within the same uh, syntax and style that we have so far. So everything looks consistent and reads nicer. And then we're going to use, uh, say, using TM Pro up here to implement this text mesh pro sub menu. So I'm going to call it text mesh pro. I think it's called, I'm not sure what it's called, just a sec. Uh, it is called TMP input field. There we go, magic of editing. Now, character name input fields, what I'm gonna call that. So basically, we're just going to select this, and let's us. You don't know what an input field is in Unity. Let's just type in something. So we're going to say character name button dot game object dot set active false. This is going to disable our name button, and then we're going to enable the sub menu, which is going to house the input field. So we're going to enable character name sub menu, and then lastly, we're going to select the character name input field by saying character name input field dot select. So we're going to basically disable our name button, enable this submenu name selection, and then in there select rather the character name input field. And then down here when we close it, we're just going to do the reverse. So why am I disabling the character name button? Well, I'm actually going to make it so that the input field looks exactly like the button, the same size and all. So we're just going to trick the player into thinking that the name button becomes the input field. And really we're just enabling a whole different game object altogether. You'll see when it's uh, all done. So let's just go and duplicate this name button here. Uh, but before we do that, let's add an on-click event for the actual opening of the character name submenu. So title screen manager, and what did I call that? Open, choose, name, submenu. All right, cool. Now we're gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna call this uh, choose name, and we're gonna get rid of a couple of things here. So we don't need this text here right now. So we're, this text mesh pro, you can see here, this is where we're actually naming the button. So we're going to use something similar. It's going to be a field though. So down here in the add component, we can add text mesh pro input field. So you can see here there's a few settings. Uh, so let's take a look at all these one by one here. First, I'm just going to get rid of this uh, regular input. So it has a target graphic, which you want to drag in for your button, your previous uh, button image. And then you have a text viewport and text components. So let's create an empty game object for the viewport. Hold Alt, size it to the exact size of this little uh, text uh, parent here. And let's call this text viewport. Let's put that in there. If you want to as well, you can add a mask on your viewport. So if anything goes outside of it, like for example, your character name, if it's too long, it'll just get cut off along these edges here. Um, and then you want to actually create a text component. So do the same thing, create an empty game object. Uh, hold Alt, make it the size of the button. And then I'm just going to call this text. And if you want to, you can copy the text component from uh, choose name. I'm just going to rename this to input field, by the way. Or copy the text input, sorry, from your name button. So it has all the same size and stuff. And I'm just going to paste this here, paste component as new. And I'm just going to leave it blank for now. So let's drag in the text component in here like so. 
And if you want, you can put some text in there already, like a dot, 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 or choose your name or just name. I'm just gonna leave mine blank. And I'm gonna make sure the font size and such is exactly the same, so 24. Uh, and that looks good. A character limit, you can make one if you want, like 15 or 16 or just 10, whatever you want. I'm just gonna set it arbitrarily at 15 for no reason. Uh, and now we can go down and do the on end. And on end is where we're going to close the character name submenu, and this will confirm our name when it's done. So close choose name submenu. All right, cool. Uh, I am going to look over my variables here real fast. Uh, gonna go to choose name, gonna disable that by default, obviously. And then title screen canvas, let's drag in our variables. We have choose character name input field and choose name menu. So choose or character input field is the input field here. And then choose name menu, choose name. I'm gonna rename that to choose name menu just so it's very clear in case the variables ever become unattached from the inspector for whatever reason that should never happen, but just to be super clear what this is, character and name menu. And I'm gonna remove the button from it. I almost forgot to do that. I'm also going to remove the player UI select button on enable from that. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna save that now at this point. Now I am going to disable our character creation menu, go to our player network manager, and we do have a character name uh, variable already, so that's good. And you can see here, we, let's jump back to open and close submenu. So on close submenu, let's say player, dot player network manager. So we're gonna say player dot player network manager, and then we're gonna reference the character name dot value. We're gonna set that equal to the character name input field dot text. So whatever you type in that text field, it's gonna set it to that on your network variable. Now on character save data, we're actually already saving the character name. Let's make sure that I'm just gonna double check. because I believe we did this when we set up loading our character profile. Uh, the default name was character. And yes, we are already saving and loading it. Cool, so let's test this out. Let's go into the character creation menu. I'm gonna hit the press start button, go to new game. I'm gonna hit this name button. Uh, so yes, the text field pops up. I'm gonna write in my name as, uh, what am I gonna call him? I'm gonna call him Ronaldo Moon. And then I'm gonna set my class to a knight and we're gonna start the game. All right, cool, we loaded in successfully. Now let's go over to the World Save Game Manager, go to our current character data. You can see my name is Ronaldo Moon. But just be super sure, let's save, go to load game. Uh, and then you can see, yep, Ronaldo Moon. So that is working as intended, very cool. All right, what's next? Well, let's go to the new game. If I were to hit hair color here, uh, you can see for some reason the female game object activates. So I forgot to put in a little bit of logic here. Uh, basically, we're never actually declaring our default uh, body type or sex. This happens when we equip armor. So because we're never declaring it, the female game object, master object is never unenabling. So if you go to unload body equipment, you can see the problem lies in we're loading our body. So you can see the female game object is enabled by default, but when we change to is male, it disables one. If we change to is not male, it disables the male object. If we change to is male, it disables the female master object. So you could make a check here for if uh, on all the change body types, enable head, enable torso, if male, whatever, but it's much easier to just when we open the character creation menu, right at the very start here, to declare that we are a male because that's what we start off by default. So on open character creation menu, let's just say player dot player body manager toggle body type true as in is male. Why? Why are we doing this? Well, we're going to call this so we disable the female master game object. So we can set the default body type right away and then save that. And now if I go back into the character creation menu and I go to the hair color, this doesn't happen. And now likewise, I can set up another button. Let's set up a button to change the character's default body type. So their sex, male or female, duplicate any of the buttons, drag them wherever you want. I'm gonna put mine closest to bottom and call it uh, body or what we'll call it sex. And then I'll go here and I'm gonna type in all caps male by default because as I just said, I'm setting the default one to male. And then over here, we can just make a function here now in the title screen canvas for toggle body type. And because we set this up in such an elegant way before, it's gonna be very easy. We barely have to do anything. All we have to do is public void toggle body type. And then what we're gonna do is we need a couple things here. So we need to switch that button. So we need to keep track of that button to, to, to disable it when we open other menus. So first off, create a variable for our character, sex, or body type button. Whoops, not a menu, that's my bad, uh, a button. So we can basically make it not clickable when we're in another sub menu. Um, and beyond the button, we also need the text field within the button because we wanna change that to either male or female. So under toggle body type, copy your method to get our player from the player network manager. Then we're gonna say player dot player network manager is male dot value is equal to the opposite of what it already is. So whenever you click this button, it's gonna basically change is male to the opposite of what it currently is because it can only be true or false. So it's just gonna be yes or no. 
Now, if the player is male.value, we want to change the button's text to display male. Otherwise, we want it to display female. Now, if you have some other body types, uh, and you can't do this, obviously, you need to make it so you can choose it from a selection of presets, but because I'm only using male or female, I'm just gonna do it like this. So, character sex, this won't work, for example, if you're doing something like multiple races or stuff like that, and you want to uh, set it up a bit differently. But if you have a choice of yes or no, very simple, just like this. So if the character is a male, we're going to say character sex text dot text is equal to male. Otherwise, it's got to be equal to female. Save. All right. Now I am going to go down here and drag in the text field under the sex button so we know. And then I'm going to go to the sex button on click. We're going to click toggle body type just like that. Now it should be working. I'm going to go down here and make sure my variables are all dragged in. Yes, they Oh, they're at the button. Drag in the character sex button like this. And I forgot to set up that button on the function for toggling. Go to toggle character creation main menu buttons. Character sex button dot enable is equal to the status that we pass. All right, let's save that. And now I'm going to test this out. And before I do that, I forgot it's going to be all caps male, all caps female to match our UI syntax. Otherwise, we'll look really out of place. Save. Start game. Press start here. New game. Uh, go down. Okay, we're at male if I hit it now. I'm gonna change my hair first, make sure that all works. So, hair type, cool, working. Male, boom, female, awesome. It changes, maintains the hair. Let's see if it maintains the class. Yes, you can see it changes the armor models to match the body type, working as intended, excellent. But we have a smaller error. You see here, I can I can click a button off. I don't know if you noticed that, I moved my joystick, went from hair color to new game and low game. That's because we're not actually disabling these buttons on the main menu when we open our character creation menu. So let's do that real fast. All right, so I'm gonna copy and paste the logic for open character creation menu, change it to open title screen and close title screen menu. And all we're gonna do is disable and enable our title screen game object, our main menu title screen game object, which will uh, basically enable or disable the buttons that are parent under them. So this will basically make sure that we cannot accidentally go from a button on the character creation menu to a button that's now hidden by the canvas underneath it, new game and load game. So there we go. And what we're gonna do on open character creation menu is just right before we do anything else, call close title screen menu. And if you wanted to as well on close character creation menu, you can reopen the title screen menu if you're allowing your player to go back to the main menu screen from here. Very simple. Okay, now I am going to test this. Save. Now if I go back into the character creation menu, new game, I can't actually get away from these buttons. So I can't accidentally hit new game or low game from the main menu. All right, so. You can see here I had a poll uh, inside the Discord, and we basically voted to see if you guys wanted to switch to Unity 6. You did in a landslide, so we're going to do that. We're going to update the project to Unity 6. I've installed 6.0.35 uh, F1, I think it's the newest one. So install whatever version you want. It's probably going to be most likely the same as long as you're within that default 6.0. Uh, if this pops up, basically just select the project, uh, Tutorial Series Elden Ring Unity, change it to 6, just accept whatever pops up here, and I'll go through this with you. Now, there is a bug that someone in the comments mentioned, which I will address. Um, hit yes for these files and other files might be found later. Hit OK. And you might need to re-import TMP Essentials, TextMesh Pro. Do that. Also, if you get an error with TextMesh Pro, just delete the folder that contains the demo or example scene. I forget which. I had that in Nephilim. Um, and then it still works uh, as it should. You might not get an error, though. I actually don't get the error here when I imported, I believe. And yes, I do not. So that's good. Now, next, you want to also check your packages for anything that's out of date. Uh, I'm not using much in this tutorial, so it's just netcode I'm going to update. I'm also going to just go down here, take netcode, update it to 2.2 from 1.1, a pretty big jump. And if you guys have any other packages, make sure you take the time to upgrade that and make sure it's actually going to work with Unity 6 before you do so. Back up your project, obviously, before you update it. Now, here's the error. This did not happen before netcode 2.2. Uh, a commenter said it and asked me to check it out. I did. I could not reproduce this error. Basically, when you get hit, where we delete our effects here on destroy all current effects, you get a stack overflow. This started happening immediately after updated Unity and Netcode. So I don't know why, but I know how to fix it. I'm just not sure why it throws me an error. So if somebody in the comments does know why, please enlighten me as to why this happens on newer versions of Netcode and not older versions. Basically, you can't call this base.destroy all current actions on a client RPC. So on the player override, copy all the logic from the base, paste it, and delete where we call the base.logic. Obviously, you need to rename the character variable to player. But now with this logic in place, you will no longer get this error. I'm not sure why. It appears that uh, the newer version of Netcode or Unity, I'm not sure what interaction is happening here. It doesn't like it when you call base dot on a client RPC. You need to put all that logic in the, the client RPC without calling both the override and the original. Calling both is what seems to be 
uh, giving you the error for stack overflow. Again, I tried, I could not reproduce this error on netcode for game objects 1.1. I was also using Unity 22. So if anybody knows why this interaction is now happening, maybe it's a change with netcode that I'm unaware of, uh, please enlighten me in the comments, I'd love to know. But if you run into the error across the project in another place, it's very likely because you are calling uh, the override method of a client RPC while also simultaneously trying to call the base method. This also happened to me in Nephilim when I updated it. I had to go and basically any functions that threw that error, I had to check if they had an override. I move all the logic to the override without calling the base. Not sure if you noticed, but I accidentally lost my intro and my credit screen. Had to take them from a YouTube video, so if the resolution's a bit lower on them, that could be why. Thank you very much for watching, guys. A massive shout out to my patrons. It is genuinely because of each and every one of you I get to keep doing this, and I love doing this. So from the bottom of my heart, you have my sincerest gratitude. That will be all for me this week. I will see you guys next week when we begin our level design and optimization tips.